Hi everybody, welcome to Active Self Protection Extra. Today on John's Briefs with Tim Forshee, I wanna talk about a, an incident we had, it was actually out of Thailand, uh, with a, uh, a shop owner using a shotgun to defend his shop against multiple armed attackers. Let's talk about the idea of kind of castle doctrine at work. Firearms Legal Protection is who I trust to help me after a use of force incident. If you're a Firearms Legal Protection member, you can attend our monthly active self-protection training seminars for free. Check out all they offer to their members at the link below. I think this is an interesting one. Now, of course, yeah. you know, we're, the incident's out of Thailand. I don't know nothing about Thai self-defense law, okay? It's a, I've been to Thailand multiple times. I love the place. The food's amazing. The people are fantastic. The, the scuba diving is otherworldly. Self-defense, I don't know. Uh, but here in the U.S., mm -hmm. right? So we're going to say, okay, we take that and we put it in Scranton, Pennsylvania there or, you, you know, in, in Jerome, Arizona, right? Why Jerome? I don't know. Just popped in your head. Popped into my cool head. Cool little town. Uh, and so, uh, you know, the shop owner, I, I think, is pretty clearly the guys, you know, got guns and they, they're coming in and trying to jack his stuff. Uh, how much is a general rule, Tim, does like, you know, Castle Doctrine protect somebody in their home? But does that extend to their business? Yes, it will. It'll extend to your business. It, it extends to what, what people, the, the term I always love, it's one of those old English terms, curtilage. So your, your shed in your backyard, your garage, your patio, those are all considered to be curtilage areas. Um, and, and yeah, the, the fact is the castle doctrine would apply to that. It would apply to your car. It would apply to your, to your place of work. Um, but I'm not, I'm not a big fan of this concept of the castle doctrine that everybody always wants to ask me about. I, I've never had a class where somebody didn't bring it up and ask me about it. Um, and again, it's not a hunting license, right? I mean, somebody Ooh, breaks wait, into my house. Hear it. It's not, it's not a, hunting. a hunting license. I always say, I, I get people to admit in my class. We, I always talk about it later in the day. And, you know, so we've all been together all day. And we kind of feel like we know each other a little bit. So people will be maybe drop their guards a bit. And I'll say, just finish this sentence for me. Somebody breaks into my house. I can. And two or three people will simultaneously say, shoot them. Kill them. Kill them. And then I say, okay, so if I, if I leave my front door open and my screen door closed but not latched, and I leave the room for a minute to go make a sandwich and, and uh, my doorbell rings, and as I walk back around the corner to see who's, standing, who's at my doorbell, my, my, somebody has actually walked through my screen door and they're standing in my front, in my front room. Let's say it's a 10-year-old Girl Scout selling Girl Scout cookies. Well, I can shoot her, can't I? Well, or Didn't she break into my house? And the answer is yes, she did legally break into my house. So I guess you're telling me that I can kill her. Are you gonna kill her? Well, of course not. Well, you understand that what I'm trying to illustrate with this, with this example is that just because the castle doctrine may say that you can shoot somebody that breaks in your house, it is not a hunting license. You're not gonna mount that little girl's head above your fireplace. Yeah, and Calm it's, I mean, down. you got rebuttable presumptions and, That's what and those is. things. I've, I had an instance where, so we used to have two stupid dogs and my big stupid mutt would like to get out and jump the fence and these things and my neighbor was not happy about yeah. it. And after the fifth time it happened, I get it. I'm sorry, dude, he's a big slobbery dog. He's not a threat to anybody. Right. He's a big American Staffordshire Terrier. He's a pit bull, uh, a pit bull, right? A real sweetie named Moses. And my neighbor one day just kind of had it and he, because my dog liked to go over to his yard. And so he grabs him up by the collar, brings him back, open my front door to bring my dog back, right? And go, hey man, your dog got out again. Now, again, he just broke into my house. You can shoot. He just, he just forcibly entered my home without right. permission. But if I shoot that guy, I, I should go to prison for right. life for don't that. Don't forget, as you pointed out, I don't know if, if anybody caught it, it's a rebuttable presumption. Right. It's not particularly difficult to rebut that presumption. There's lots of times that somebody would illegally enter your home that you're not in fear for your life. So I always tell people, we talk about the stand your ground law. Um, you know, do you have to stand and, 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 uh, uh, and fight before you, can, uh, before you can run, et cetera. Then we have the castle doctrine. Somebody breaks into my house, I can kill them. I always tell people, ignore them. Yep. Ignore those rules. Are you in fear for your life? If you're in fear for your life, it doesn't matter if you're in your house or out of your house, and in, in your home, in your business, or out of your business. If you're in fear for your life, you're in fear for your life. If right. you uh, are in fear for your life, it doesn't matter if you're walking forwards or backwards on the stand your ground law. If you're not in fear for your life, why are we having this conversation about self-defense? So to me, that's it's a largely it's a media-driven coat hanger that we can hang a, a coat on, right. and, it, and, it, and it's an easy way to dismiss what somebody did was wrong because this, that, and it. 
to me, I, I just don't like them. There's, it's very rare that I'm ever going to really see them as, as anything that's going to be helpful in a case. Well, and, and I will say that, okay, so when you're in your, your place of business or, now let's just, there's a difference between if you own the business and if you're an employee of sure. the business too. But if you own the business, well then, this is my private property mm -hmm. that I'm on. And so the laws of private property apply. And that's even if you lease, guys. They don't have to yeah, own yeah. If you, yeah. you If you have a leasehold interest, if you have a residential property interest, then that same applies. Yes. Same as yeah. if you're a renter versus an right. owner of your home, right? right. Still your place. And so then I get enhanced protection. If I'm an employee, well, that is determined by whether my employer has said I have your that right. Your employer makes the call. That's yeah, right. your employer decides yeah. whether that right exists. And, and so, you know, I, I think that in this case that we saw in this video out of Thailand, I think the owner did a fine job. I, yeah. Well, in everything but marksmanship, right? I wish he'd been a little bit more accurate. Yeah. And, and Although he's, ended the threat he's alive, I, you know, I'm, I, I guess I'm not wishing yep. other people died. So, no, I, I, you no. know, in that respect. But yeah, to me, when, when I watch this video, these guys aren't just your run-of-the-mill morons. No, it's pretty serious. These guys, I mean, I saw a suppressor. They're all hooded up. They're, yep. they're tacked out. They're, they, you know, these guys know what they're doing. They, had, they obviously had rehearsed this. They have one guy. They, they all went to, like, their predetermined positions. And, I mean, this was people that were not to be trifled with, right? Not joking around. And so, to me, this wasn't a matter of, well, I can shoot them because they tried to enter my... No, they, they fired a shot into the building. Mm -hmm. They shattered the door, or shattered the window. They walked through the window, obviously there to rob. And obviously, they don't go in to rob it. If they were just there to rob it, they'd have crowbars. They were there to shoot and kill if needed to, in order to effectuate that robbery. Uh, the only question I was concerned with, would a reasonable shop owner in that shop be reasonably in fear for their life or for their wife's life or their employee? And the answer is resoundingly yes, of course. So. And, and in this case, you know, the, what the facts that actually showed up, they're not disputable, right? This one right. is an easy one yeah. in terms of, was he at risk of death or great bodily harm? Yeah. Yes. Now, once they start running off, at some point you gotta go, all right, they're running off and I'm not at risk anymore. At some point. At However, some point. this is a guy with a gun, multiple guys with guns that fired into my right. residence. I mean, are they gonna run around the corner and kill people, take hostages, uh, carjack somebody? I think, you, I'm, again, I'm not saying this is your rationale for doing it. Benefit but of the doubt goes it, a long way. I think after the fact, we could probably rationalize your choices and I would think you'd probably be okay with something like this. Yeah, and, and again, the benefit of the doubt goes to the defender a long way, right. in, especially in a clear cut case. Right, like right, this. right. And I would think even, I hate to say it, but probably more so in Thailand. Right. right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. you'd sure hope. Yeah. Uh, so again, I really want, does my castle doctrine apply to my place of business? Probably. Mm -hmm. Does that matter? No. I don't want it to matter. I don't want it to matter. Right. Uh, this is no different than the defensive display versus brandishing one yeah. that we did uh, you know, a little while ago. Listen, ignore that, okay? Right. Was I in, in genuine, reasonable fear of of death or great bodily harm. Right. Was I? Was that the case? Was I at risk and did I perceive that risk? That's why I use deadly force. And, and so the funny part is, Tim, at the end of the day, I feel like we just keep saying the same thing, that the principles are very clear. The right. applications- That's what I always tell people. Can get a little ticky-tacky. Self-defense is the easiest thing in the world to explain. It's the most difficult thing to apply. Mm. Okay. So don't worry about this, the, the Castle Doctrine junk. There's, by the way, just as a, a point of fact, there's not a state in the union that doesn't have, that has a duty to retreat from your home. There's not one state in the union that imposes a duty to retreat out of your own home. Uh, it doesn't exist. Uh, I know some people who say that, well, in California, not true. Yeah. Well, in New Jersey, not true. Uh, that, that's not the case. But, but again, even that said, if I can safely retreat from my home, sure. and not only my safety, but the safety of all my loved ones, right. I'd be a fool not to, uh, because then I'm getting an optional gunfights, and that seems stupid. So I hope you understand how that works. Make sure that you use self-defense correctly. As a general rule, when four guys all dressed in black with suppressed handguns start shooting into your house and trying to make entry to your house, I think you're okay. You're I probably think, okay to return fire. Yeah. yeah, and a shotgun is a great tool yeah. when that goes down. Tim, thanks for the knowledge. As always, buddy, thanks.